how do we get to a point where 10, 12-year-old Range Rovers, Mercedes-Benz, BMWs, cars that were worth 50, 60, 70,000 pounds not so long ago, now can't even compete or in the same money as 04 Yaris's and 08 plate 4 Fiestas? How? Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to another auction video. Today we're at Aston Barclay Prix Heath where we're going to be looking at some prestige and executive vehicles from the brands such as Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Land Rover, Audi, Alfa Romeo and more to try and see what's going on with prices. Now before Christmas the prices of these vehicles was coming down pretty harsh and it's been happening really since about October last year when corrections started to happen in the market. However over the last few weeks in January 24 I have noticed that these vehicles have started to sort of level off a little bit and we're starting to get some normality and dealers trying to buy again although there does seem to be a little niche area in this market where these big old tub units as we call them so your big old vehicles like your big bmws and mercs and land rovers particularly of a certain age are becoming really really cheap and hopefully today we can demonstrate that in this video so anyway let's get ourselves down there get in the auction hall have a look around and see if we can spot any bargains this video is sponsored by CarWow. Now, dealers out there, are you looking to source new stock? Well, I would recommend that you get yourself on CarWow's platform. Now, CarWow's platform brings sellers and traders together in order to transact cars. They have over 500 lots going on for auction pretty much every single day, Monday to Saturday. As a registered trader, you can submit bids as many vehicles as you like, including vehicles that are in auction and vehicles that you can buy now straight away. The platform is really simple to use and all the information is gathered for you by CarWow. They make sure the seller uploads all the correct information, all the right pictures of the vehicle, all the service history, making sure you've got all the damage noted, information on the tyres, making sure the vehicle is correctly HPI'd and making sure the no vehicles are categorised go onto the platform to give you peace of mind. And once you've purchased the vehicle, CarWow will collect the documentation for you and make sure it's all correct before you commit to the actual sale. They even offer competitive delivery, so you don't even have to go and collect the vehicle yourself. CarWow's buying fees are some of the cheapest out there, cheaper than its rivals and also cheaper than some of the main auction houses. It is completely free to register as a trader and you can use a service as much or as little as you like with no ongoing costs or fees to you. So whether you're a large independent dealer, a small dealer like me, maybe an established home trader, you can get your account by registering at carwow.co.uk or clicking on the link in the description. So why not get yourself involved, get yourself on the platform, get your free account today and give them a try. Some beast here. Yes. Alpha, I'll look at that in a sec. Audi TT in red. Engine repacking. 2 litre turbo FSI Quattro S line. Beautiful. 73 foul. No MOT on it. Strange. Who's part X that and they're not putting an MOT on it? That's just asking for trouble. You're going to part X your car with no MOT on. I'm just asking for a kicking off the salesman in the valuations department. They're going to have you. Tyres flat as well. Very, 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 very low profile tyres on it. I would suspect them wheels aren't original. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm not a big TT buyer, as you can imagine. They don't look original wheels. I just don't think they'd have that low profile tyre on. Because they are. Well, <laughs> you better pot over that. You're in trouble. Anyway, it's not bad. It wants well, red car. They want a buff. But a good buff. To shine beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Nice inside. It's a TT, isn't it? The popular cars. They're not my cup of tea. They're a bit too low slung for me. I don't mind a low down coupe, but and I do like it. I do like the quality of these. They're quite a quality vehicle. But, um, yeah, no, just not my image. Now, this is a bit of me. Not not in Burgundy. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of Burgundy, as I mentioned before. I'm not quite sure what the man was thinking when he went into Alfa Romeo in 2017 and went again. Ooh, we've got one in Burgundy. One of those colours. 2.2 JTDM 1.8 Super. 49,000 miles. So she's a diesel. She's a diesel. One former keeper. Everything's right about it on paper, as in mileage, one former keeper. Not, well, the engine's not probably the one you'd pick, but it's not a terrible engine. Um, just the colour's not for me. We've got damage. Thing we've got damage. Look at that there, it's a shame. 
well of a whack that probably is fixable the door seems in line just badly damaged we've got a bit of repair needed on the sill on the turn the arch here it's a shame cheap money though to be honest with you most of them these depreciate in the first couple of years so it's probably good value at the moment and if you randy with a paintbrush you could uh, be a cheap car for someone to paint up and fix if you can live with the fact that it's burgundy BM in, nice BM there's quite a few bits of interesting toys in today not like, ooh carbon fibre, gin spoiler I've got a story about one of those I'll tell you in a minute bloody thing 125,000 miles, 430D, good engine one former keeper be nice it was a 435 but I think we're just asking too much not a bad car, once a buff wheels are a little bit chippy but are nice wheels black and silver I'm not a fan of black wheels, touch of silver in it I'll let you off pinstripes on the door, which is a bit odd I'm not sure they're factory or not a bit odd, I've never seen that before in one of these could be original, I don't know um, interior wants a valet, the leather is awful and even say as far as to say that possibly stained and marked permanently so that could be an issue it's had a spoiler on the back at some point it's been ripped off or broken it's just it, it wants work this there's certainly no uh, clean car this it's then um, average to below average i'd say it doesn't need a shitload of paint around it just wants a little bit well it wants a buff and just mainly just fettling really on some bits of stickers coming off and maybe on just i don't know just a bit more just a little bit more effort on it needed required the wheels furbing and stuff like that so there's a bit of work to be done there but uh, spoil, uh, spoiler I had one of them come in once on MOT and I took it off, well I put it on the ramp it was too low didn't judge it just roll on the ramp didn't even realise because our ramp and our old MOT station wasn't recessed smashed one of them to pieces it did luckily it didn't damage the bumper just the chin spoiler uh, I had a big row with the guy because I was being really helpful so I'm really sorry blah 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 I'll get you another one blah 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 um, and he wanted a, to get a genuine one from BMW I said well he didn't actually have a genuine one from BMW on it because it wasn't a proper M Sport one with this car carbon pack he just made it look like it I said well where did you get it from he went well I got it from eBay a Chinese one I said well I'll put you one of those on why, why? Said, no I want a genuine one from BMW at 750 quid to which I was told you ain't having one so you know I would take the one cheap Chinese one that you had on originally and replace it with and my apologies and I'll DMOT won't charge you a test fee or take me to court that's the option because you're not getting better man anyway reluctantly he um, he accepted my offer and apologised actually in the end he was quite not good about it but uh, he did try stinging me which you know it was my fault but it was, if I broke a £200 part I should be placing a £200 part not an £800 one anyway that's enough of my ranting um, big old BM big 7 series I do like a 7 series this is a bit of an old tub the old Dane Egg specs on the front there crown's a bit uh, battered on it 730D 171,000 miles <laughs> well I'll tell you what can't argue you're not being reliable the paintwork is really really flat and someone's had a flip count on it here as well it's a mess it's a shame that that wing's really flat and stained I mean a buff up would massively improve it but it's still rough bumpers a mess it's been whacked here as well I mean for what they're asking for it, it it's a lot of car but it is a bit of a it's what we call that a bit of a smoker that. you'd love that just as a cheapy smoky car and run drives at the auctions in and just mess about in but I don't think it's a retailable car to be honest you can't really tell here but it's all been repaired badly up here with flip cam job it's awful which is one of those cars probably just not be with that wrap it just buy it strain that bumper out just wrap the damn thing cheap cheap tub for someone so i always say i'm not a bm fan but i do like a seven series range rover sport standing out if it was cheap yes i would have a go i'll say that to you will i retail it absolutely not what will I do with it? Not a clue. Um, it's not something you really want to put on a car pitch, to be honest, because um, you need big balls to retail one of these. But uh, we'll have a look and see what it does. Nice thing in red. 
I'm not a red car person, but they do look, when they do shine up well, they're in good nick, they do look well. Oh, a bit crammed in. Can't wait up, it's leaning ever so slightly on the left. Looks like it's leaning a bit on here. Might just be where the ground is to be fair, but we'll see when it starts up, you're looking to make sure you know suspension lights on. People always ask me, well, I'm going to go buy a Range Rover, what should I do? Well, just make sure when it comes in, make sure it starts up, make sure it raises up properly, and make sure you've got no lights on. If he's got lights on, he's got faults, simple as that really. Most of them have, suspension faults, part brake faults, like you name it. They are uh, troublesome, but very nice to drive. Really diesel, make sure when it goes through, if you can ask, can, it's possible, get him in neutral, rev it up. Make sure you're not any nasty noises, if it's smoking like a, like a 20 a day or 60 a day, then uh, keep well away from them. That's all they can really guide you with. No matter how mint they are at this age, they will have problems. Might be minor, might just be the odd little bit here and there, but they will have little bits of fault suspension, knocks and bangs, they just do. They are, uh, say, they're a deep pockets type of car and 800 quid to tax. Anyway, cheap enough at that price, that guy price. We'll see what it does. And a boat. Engines in this. Ah, look at that, beautiful. 2.2 diesel, one form of keeper, done 72. If you're going to buy an Evoke, first of all, you probably need your head testing. But if you do are going to buy an Evoke, buy the 2.2. They do a 2 litre diesel, and they do a 2.2. All of them were 2.2 to around this sort of era. I think it was late 15. I'll stand corrected, but it's around there, 15, 16 plate. After that, the 2 litre. 2 litre is awful, awful engine. Don't buy it. Put it in the same category as wet belt sort of Ford engines. Horrendous. Problematic. Loads of issues. Just not even worth considering. Although very good on fuel. 2.2, not as good on fuel. It's, in the honesty, it's not very economical. But it's an old school engine. It's reliable. I'm not saying they're bulletproof, but they're considerably better than the alternative 2 litre. So I'd rather sacrifice five, six, seven, eight miles to the gallon, probably more than this, the eight to 10 miles to the gallon against the new engine or newer engine and have that extra reliability. The wife might be me for one of these. And to be honest, because I'm a bit tight fisted in Northern, I'm trying to keep her in the car she's got, even though I don't like that either. But um, sometimes it's better the devil, you know. But if I was gonna submit and buy a one, it'd have to be a two two. Anyway, there's the guide price, we'll see what it does. Got far in red. Ooh. Just know it straight away. This is what you're up against with red cars. Bumpers all picky and horrible. This is a desirable car as far as you know. <laughs> Desirability goes in the trade at the moment. Go far sell. Just did want any other colour but red. Not because it's even a bad colour and doesn't look nice when they come up with shiny. They look beautiful. They're just so problematic for black appeal and paint issues that they can, they're just a ball like 2 litre TSI Golf R 67,000 miles hmm yeah, anyway, is it? anyway moving on uh, nice thing, wants a bumper repair on it definitely, wants a whole thing painting wants a buff up the rest of it doesn't look too bad to be honest it looks pretty straight other than the buff up on the body there's no major paint oh no, smoke too soon top of the door so you end up then, that's a bit of pain that, you're going to have to paint all along there. Probably could lose it down there, but you're just going to get the match. I buffs up. This is the problem, you see. It's just, this, that's a ball egg for someone now, that, to get that matched up. Any other colour but red. Anyway, it, it will be, if someone want to buy it, that's for sure. Um, there's the guide. We'll see what that does. Old Audi in. We've got here now. Q5. 2 litre TFSI petrol, mm. 96,000. Usually, when you see these, you use your diesels. Auto, I see a petrol one. Would you buy a petrol one? I don't know. I don't think there'd be much call for one of those. I think most people would just usually urge for the diesel, although you're less compliant. Better bear that in mind. So I've, driven one of, I've driven one of these a few months ago where the um, it's the Q, was it the R, R version? I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, it was, it was bloody quick, I tell you that. TFSI Quattro, nice thing. A little chippy on the back bumper, but overall, not too bad. Typical Audi interior, very presentable, very nice. Very stern, beautiful. 
a nice car. Let's SUVs go. Wind is down, which is a bit odd. I wonder if there's something going on there with that window. But uh, a couple of tyres want dressing on it, but overall, a bit of clean, bit of stock. It's just rare to see one in the petrol, really, because I bet you most of those out there are probably diesels. Yeah, I'll quickly show you what else is coming in as well behind it. We've got the Range Rover, old Range Rover. I won't buy this one. This is one of those cars that one of those chaps has had, and it's just chromed it to death. Chrome grill. Chrome rammer lights. It's updated the grill, which I'm not against because it does look freshen them up, but don't think he's matched it right with the colour scheme. Chrome bloody mirrors, chrome door handles, beige interior, hmm. black wheels, chrome rammer lights. These are the sort of guys who used to have PC cruisers and chrome them up. Yeah. In fact, if I bought something like that, I have an expression that I use when we have stuff like this, which my staff laugh at, which is we need to detwat it, which is basically take all the chrome off and all the stickers off and stuff. That's what detwatting means. So sorry for the blasphemy, but that's what I call it. Um, it's just it just don't look right. It just, it's not meant to have all that on. It's not a you know it's not a car from the seventies, not on an eighteen year old Range Rover. Anyway, it's not booking out a lot of money. Fifteen, sixteen hundred quid territory. Very cheap. Um, should we show you this ST as well before we wrap up for the auction? Nice thing, ST. 115 plate in black. Seems to have a clean report on it. Not quite sure why it's got a mark blank thing for the Jake interior. 2 litre D ooh, 2 litre diesel ST, that's a shame. 185 brake edition, 82,000 miles. They go well. Very torquey. But um yeah. It's not really a proper ST, is it? Let's, let's be realistic. It's a shame. Um, we'll have a little kit in it. I've driven a few of these. And they, you know, so the diesels do go well. But really, you'd want a petrol, wouldn't you? Let's be honest. I can't remember when they finished the petrol engine for 2.5 Volvo type engines and uh, switched them to the 2 litres. I'm sure someone in the comments will know. I'm not uh, obviously a big buyer of them in my price range. Well, obviously I know a bit about them, I've worked on them. Certainly driven a few of them for companies we've dealt with over the years. There's the book price on it anyway. We'll see what that one does. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice car. Can't, can't say it's not a nice car. Range Rover coming in with squeaky brakes. 
nice Freelander coming in, Freelander 2, and then the Evoke as well after it, so we'll see what these do. That Range Rover is uh, a little bit smoky. It's horrendous, but it's a little bit smoky. We've certainly got a seized caliper. Mm. Very squeaky Range Rover. Caliper driving uh, back in the rear. The brakes are working. The brakes are working. It's high on the top, back running, but low on the bottom. That's about the same year as the wife. Slightly more miles than I gave seven grand for that two years ago. And that was cheap at the time. I just picked up on my back. Now look at it. Probably 38, four grand worth of sell and retail it. You wouldn't dare. Cheap car. I'm Ruth. Eight 
A lot of online bidders on it. Bear in mind, they're not going to see the damage anywhere near like we are, you know, in the flesh. I don't think it's made much of a difference, to be honest, that. <laughs> it's done more than clean money. Well, not quite. It's done 10 clean, 10-8. It's done, what, 10-2? Average is 9-7. I'm shocked at that. How are we doing? Yeah, I don't know. As we always do, send the best of us. Eat plus into Sweet Poop. I'll tell you what, what a lot of half a lot of money. 37,000 miles there for you, lads. Where do we go? Something away. Let me have a go. 95 and a go. 95 is good with money, lads. Right colour, pound room. Six on the line. 90 for the bit. On the net. 90 for the bit. 96, 96. You mean 90 for the bit? 96, 96. Sorry, no. 96 on the net. 96 for the bit. 7, 97, 98 on the net. 98, 98, 98. Ten bit, 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 ten this is usually good news, V60 Sports Wagon. Yeah, 90 foul. Uh, all of them, all of them. Lever as well. Bargain. That's a cheap car, that. Very cheap car. I'm surprised at that one. See what this TT does. Next one here is the Here is the Wake. Yeah. Right, listen up. It says it's got no P5. He's on his way, okay? Uh, yeah, so uh, Raj has got it set to us so the V5 and he's got a photo copy as well, haven't we? Yeah. I've got a clock reference number, so the only thing you really need is nothing. So, yeah, we've got a clock ref and as I said, the V5 is on its way. It's been sold on the Sheriff's Play Chaps. A bit value there. Where do we go? What about 73,000? Nice thing, and it is the main shape. Nice. Let's get going. We're starting around that a bit. We'll start. Let's go 95 and out of that. 95 to the white. 95, 6 on 9. 9 feet, 7 in the red. 97 bit. 97 bit, 9 8 on the net. 9 8. 9 9 in the red. 9 9 in the red. 9 9 10 on the net. 10 bit, 10. 10, 10. 1 on the net. 10 1. 10 1. 10 1. 10 1 on the line. 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 Yes, so no. 10 now to the line. It's on the net. Come in. 10 1. We're good. 10 1. Last call. 10 1. Hard to shout. 10 1. Once. Twice. And another bit. 10 thousand and one on the net. 2. Okay, 10-1, uh, 10-1 on the line, last call, once, twice, and another minute, 10-1, that's all. Right there. Sort of controversial out there, but it's sold nonetheless. Oh yeah, now the old Land Rover Sport, 2.7 diesel. This is a hell of a plus. The one that wants to be twatting. Hot bolt, 860 quid. Miles on it yet, they don't know. I can just see a warning light on in the dash, in the background there. It looks like the handbrake warning light. Typical Range Rover, always broken. Thousand pounds. That's a lot. Level bit, 12, not quite yet. 12 under round, 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 12 under round
A good point about that is it's got the cheap road tax on it. So the 8700 quid tax. 356 plate ones. Bad buy. Next one is number 54. Golf Okay, see if it does clean. It's clean 6, 650. It isn't clean. It's about average. Wow. That's died strong. It's started, it's now it's clean money. He's gone straight in with big bits. Killed it. Probably overpaid for it because he went in with big bits, but who knows where would have landed. Anyway, he's not he's not really massively overpaid for it. It's a nice car. It's a rare one. But this old bus, no luck, Star X Estates. Big 3.5 petrol. I one or two of these in my time. Oh, we'll love the big Lexus. Oh, we have four fuel there, right? But drive lovely for quite a lot of fuel, a little use. Average is three grand, it's not actually that bad. Well, it's super data tax. Lovely car though, and he just I think it's just drives the line. Uh, I won't say it's an executive car this, but we'll we'll see what it does. It's something different. EOS. Or as um, I'm going to borrow a phrase from a trader, a well-known trader, the um, condensation station is what this should be called because they're just horrific for keeping water inside and leaking water into boots and stuff. They're not good, these things. They look the part, but they generally are a pain in the arse. Very cheap, though. Clean's only 1,400 quid. Look, incredible value for a diesel with 72 power bit. Overbooked, but expected, really, of what? Taking no shit. Here's a beast. I like these. BMW 6 series. Look at that. What's a buff? I get admit that, but 112,000, 635D, the one you want. 
Too wrong with it. It's got an engine marker on it. I was nearly about to bid them without looking. I stopped myself. What was three grand on it? Should be doing that. There we go, three grand. It's coming up with a DPF issue. It's not the end of the world to sort. Wow. You get that running right, you've got a hell of a car. Get that running right, you've got a hell of a car. Big Especially when then a little fiesta comes in, no fiesta and another 1800 quid. <laughs> I was watching back at the cash, I've just started watching that. Yeah. I'm like, please leave the drum out. Yeah, no. If you get asked, you want an executive hybrid, what should you buy? Crossover. Buy one of them. They are absolutely super. They don't, there's nothing else that drives like that. And they actually work. And it's a bit of an odd thing, that's it. 90,000 miles on a 20 plate. That's a lot of miles for a four year old car. It's a lovely thing, but I just think that's the wrong engine for that car. I'm standing here, I'm only like what, a yard or two away from it, and it doesn't sound very well. Over book though. 10 7 I thought that would have sold. Again, 
over 800 quid over book. Or... Wow, this is a beast. I love these. I used to have one of these. C L S. Three twenty. Yeah. Nearly bought it for nostalgia purposes. Clean's 1500 quid. I was, I was willing to give clean money for it. One of the best cars I've ever owned. One of the best. I'll let you know in another video what the best is, but honestly, they are sublime. That 320D engine is just silky smooth. Lovely interiors in him. I mean, that's getting a bit too much now. It's still a lot of car for the money, but once the wheels refurbing and once the buff up and stuff. But they, they genuinely are. If you ever think about buying one of those as a cheap runaround, honestly, buy one. They are absolutely superb vehicles. Yeah, well, we do it, Jan, doesn't it? We all fall for it. Yeah, he wants a big buff. The pinstripes on it. Do it in their factory. I don't know if I can't work out if they're supposed to be on it or not. Yeah, yeah, they look alright. Yeah, they look alright. Yeah, To do what I think he's going to do, it's a lot of car. Oh, that paint is awful. Let me show you that paint now, it's a better light. Can't quite make it out, but that is like, it's like a blackboard. God, someone's been let loose with a flick cam. 
Love Mojo Judas in the series now to see what they're going to see. What we're going to go for this one, we've got past this uh, series. Eighteen hundred pound. Black with the oyster. Sold on the cherished plate. Because you know it's a 2011 plate. Someone online is going to buy that. There we go. <laughs> online, it'll look amazing. There is no interest at all in the room on that car. Because everyone can see how bad the paint is. But online, this is a problem. You take a risk. You've got, you know, very basic pictures to go on, and it's, you know, you bid accordingly, and you can you can get a wrong perception of the vehicle. If they were in the room, would be buying it. Who knows? Unlikely. Well, certainly wouldn't bid as much. Oh, that was late. Back in two, bottom box 26. Got there again. Okay, so another auction video completed. Let's break that down. First of all, we'll talk about the positives for the trade as well. In particular, prices seem to have leveled off on the more dear expensive vehicles, as we saw there. We saw later Range Rover Evokes, particularly some of the BMs as well. There was a nice 4 Series that went through, the Alpha, even with damage. They were all starting to make book price again. Most of them were making clean and actually going above that. That certainly was not happening uh, before Christmas, as we saw in my other videos. A lot of those cars were really struggling as prices were starting to come down which started happening around October last year. It was a big correction in the market, and we got to a point where in December before Christmas, no traders were really buying this type of stock, or if they were, they were only paying sort of the bottom end of the book price. Although that seems to have changed now, I've noticed that over the last few weeks as well, we seem to have got some stability back in the market, which is great news because it means now that the demand will pick up again, and hopefully we should get some levelling off and some more sensibility in the marketplace. However, there was one area that we need to talk about, and I mentioned it in the intro, which is the, particularly these sort of older executive prestige cars. My word, they have dropped hard, and there doesn't seem to be any love whatsoever for these old type tubs, as we call them, these big units. As we saw in that video there, that 7 Series, we had the nice 5 Series early on as well, the CLS Merc. These were doing really cheap money for what they were. Cars that were tens of thousands, £50,000 in some cases, new, doing absolute bare bones. Not really any desire for them. They offer incredible value. But when you can compare it, like I mentioned in the intro, I mean, on that same day in that auction, which we'll see in my next video, I witnessed Fiestas, old shape Fiestas. I'm not talking like Mark V Fiestas. 08 plates doing 1,500 quid. They'll be at 1,800 pounds out the door. Uh, Yaris's old shape Mark One Yaris's 0304s doing 1,500, 1,600 pounds with fees. When you can compare the prices of these really old super minis now, what they're doing, when for a few hundred pounds more you can get like Range Rovers, you can get that Merc CLS, you can get those BMs for that sort of similar money. It just like it's just comparisons between them is just a night and day. But the reality is the market is going towards these more cheaper small runarounds rather than actually trying to buy these bigger units, these big tubs as I call them which is odd. So if you're in the market for one of those and you can buy one of those vehicles, one of these more cheaper exec vehicles, then my word, you've got yourself an absolute bargain there if you can afford to run them. But again, it just shows the desire is not there for these vehicles. It is more placed at the budget end of the market. People want small, cheap, reliable, cheap cars now. They're just not interested in these big old units. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I've got more auction content coming along the way, including a general video as well I did at that auction where I'm buying sort of general stock for myself and also filmed a lot of newer cars in there as well sort of everyday stuff and you can check that out when it lands later this week i also will be doing a fleet sale very soon as well so make sure you check that out there's a lot of auction content coming over the next 10 to 14 days in february so make sure you check those videos out as they land 
Also, big thanks to Aston Barkley as always. They have been superb. You can check out their link in the description for their auction houses, which are dotted all over the UK. And finally, shout out to Carwow dealers. If you are looking for somewhere to source stock from, get your free account today by using the link in the description. Sign yourself up to Carwow. It's completely free to sign up and you can use it as much or as little as you need. So thank you all for watching this one, guys. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel because it helps me carry on doing these videos for you. Uh, and I will see you all in the next one.